The Inkata Freedom Party has a new president. Velenko Sini Shabisa has been elected to take over from longtime party leader Prince Mangosutu Butelezi. Butelezi led the party for more than four decades. Shabisa has already called for a debate regarding the Ingwanyama Trust Board over the land issue. Velenko Sini Shabisa is my guest and joins me from our Durban studio. Mr. Shabisa, good evening. Thank you very much uh, for your time. Congratulations, uh, but uh, you really have uh, big shoes to fill, don't you? Good evening, uh, Vuyo, and the viewers. Of course, yesterday was the beginning of a new chapter in my life when I had to fill in the shoes of the giant of Africa and the giant of South Africa, the Prince of Wapindangen. Um, well, given that uh, the IFP has only known one leader, uh, are you not worried that uh, people will always compare you uh, with him? For every individual <clears throat> who will succeed the Prince of Wapindangene will be a difficult time for that individual. So now <clears throat> I approach this responsibility with faith and courage that over the years when I followed the Prince of Wapindangene, I learned a lot from him which will make me able to execute this huge responsibility. Of course, I will not be like him because he is an individual with his gifts, which are not common to so many people. But the dedication, the courage, the fortitude, and the faith that I have as a servant of the people will make me rise to the occasion. In, in conversations uh, that you had uh, with him, uh, what has been uh, Prince Mangosutu Butelezi's advice to you as you take on this new role? His main advice was that always be honest, respect people, even if you do not agree with a person maintain his or her right to express his view and you listen to it so that you are able to digest the idea of a person you do not agree even in the political outlook. And he emphasized honesty and integrity that always stand for what you believe and always hold your ground don't say this today and say that tomorrow and say the opposite the following day. Whenever you have developed a position, clarify your position and stand for it, even if people can turn away from you. But if you believe you are right, maintain your ground. Now, uh, your conference decided to give him the title of uh, President Emeritus. What exactly does uh, that mean and what's going to be his specific role? The title of Emeritus is a conventional practice. When you have a member in good standing who reaches a stage of retirement but who can still contribute in the welfare of the organization it is a common practice that the member is granted the emeritus status. But not everybody, especially unique people who have special skills which you cannot afford to lose while they can still contribute in the organization. This equally goes then to the Prince of Wapindangen. The emeritus status grants him the following. One, it allows him to attend the meetings of the party at any time when time and health allows him to do so. 
Secondly, it allows him to be available for the organization to consult him at any time and seek wisdom on issues they confront as they move forward. You will agree, the Prince of Wapindangene is the most experienced person in the political landscape of South Africa. In Africa, he is not comparable to any politician who has sustained himself over so many decades, but remained relevant and also practical. And lastly, the emeritus status grants him the responsibility of carrying out the national duties at the political level. You know, there is an issue that remains not yet resolved, the reconciliation between the IFP and the ANC. When health allows him to perform national duties, we feel he should pursue and be part of the process of ensuring the reconciliation between the ANC and the IFP in order to normalize the politics of our country. Um, does he remain in Parliament? As long as his health allows, he offered voluntarily in 2017 that when he steps down, if his health allows him, he will be available to support the new leadership, to provide advice to the new leadership, to be deployed wherever the new leadership feel he must be deployed. So now, as long as he, his health allow him, he will remain a major player in the political landscape of South Africa, even inside the National Assembly. The whole South Africa knows the critical role as a voice of reason he plays in the National Assembly when things go loose. So the IFP would not want to deprive South Africa one of the most experienced politician and asset. So as long as his life allows him, his health allows him, he will remain active in all spheres in our country. Uh, well, you are currently the leader of the opposition in the uh, KZN legislature. Are you going to remain there or will you go to, to the national parliament? Today, the NEC <clears throat> took a decision that intentionally I was deployed as a premier candidate in Wazulu Natal and now a leader of the official opposition. I will remain deployed in Wazulu Natal to consolidate our base in Wazulu Natal as I will be rolling out a program of expanding the IFP footprint, moving from the strength of Wazuru Natal, rolling it out to all nine provinces in South Africa. The deployment in the either locally or provincially does not necessarily always translate that if you are a leader, you must go national. The party decide on the basis of the opportunities it sees in front of it Today, a decision was taken that I will remain in Wazulu Natal, where we will consolidate running for 2021 and thereafter running for 2024 general elections. Now, uh, I mean, what though distinguishes the IFP from other uh, political parties? In 2019, what does the IFP stand for? The IFP is a voice of reason. The IFP is going to be waging a new struggle in a new season in South Africa. In the face of collapsing economy in our country, which will affect the citizen of this country, in this new season, the IFP will be waging a new struggle of economic and social justice. 
the inequalities that exist in our communities, unemployment rate that is increasing day in, day out, the injustices that is committed against children and women will be target issues for the IFP as we move forward to 2021 and 2024 elections. We will be rolling out a program of moving village to village, city to city, town to town, and province to province, expanding our footprint and meeting the forgotten and the unheard voices and presenting the IFP as a listening party and an alternate ready government to govern this country. Now, uh, you seem to have taken up the issue of Ingwanyama Trust um, and uh, made it uh, your issue. What is it, your attitude? What is your understanding of uh, the problem there? There is no big problem in the issue of Ingonyama Trust, except that South Africa should be appreciating the initiative that was taken by the Prince of Wapindangene to pass a law that managed to secure the little pieces of land to remain at the exposure of the black people in South Africa, because this is only unique in Wazuru Natal. The IFP is of the view that the initiatives that have been taken by the state president, which has eventually came out with a recommendation that Ingonyama Trust must be scrapped, is inappropriate because, firstly, the consultation has not been done with the writer of the Ingonyama Trust Act, which is Prince of Wapindangen. The consultation has not also been done with the custodian of the Ingonyama Trust, that is Majesty the King. It has also not been done thoroughly, the consultation with the beneficiaries who reside in the Ingonyama Trust land. I'm one of them. The biggest problem that will occur, as many people believe to have a title deed in the rural areas will be a solution to every problem. But that will create more problems. Because if a breadwinner who holds a title deed in a family of a polygamous nature resides in Deben, can take the title deed and borrow the money in the bank. When he fails to pay back the money, the bank will go and evict the family in that land which he used as a guarantor of the title deed. So now, the Ingonyama Trust secures land for many people who can be at risk if the issue of a title deed will be the only main issue. Yet the title deed will not be a solution because many people will use those title deed to resell the land because the social inequalities are key issues that should be a priority matter. Creating job opportunities, changing the way our economy is managed in our country and create the opportunities for small businesses to create more jobs and employ more people, that should be the priority other than wanting to scrap what has been done and secured land to our African people. Well, speaking of uh, priorities, you've had your own fair share, <coughs> excuse me, of internal divisions. How do you plan to deal with that problem? Internally, <clears throat> our first priority which we also confirmed today as the NEC, is that we will deepen unity in order to ensure solidarity. Both unity and solidarity will be the pillars 
for teamwork as we move forward. But what we saw over the weekend in the IFP elective conference, these days across political parties, it is rare to find a conference with delegates of close to 5,000 unanimously agreeing on who will lead the party forward. The collective leadership that was elected over the weekend, there were no contestation. There were no noise. There were no issues. But the delegates of the IFP had a unanimous agreement. Why? His Excellency, the President Emeritus, two weeks ago, called a special meeting of all leaders of the IFP throughout South Africa and talk about unity, that unless we strike unity as an organization, we are at risk as we see what is happening in other political parties. And that was demonstrated over the weekend. And moving forward, we will build on what was demonstrated over the weekend, unity and solidarity as our weapons as we move forward. Are you going to reach out to people like uh, Zanele Ramagwazam, CB, <coughs> excuse me, people like Ziba Chiane? The IFP is a home of all people of goodwill, but not the opportunists. Any person of goodwill, whoever he or she may be, is welcome in the IFP. I want to stress not the opportunist. As we will be moving village to village, province to province, expanding our footprint, we will be meeting all people of South Africa because IFP believes in social cohesion. We will be meeting the minority communities because IFP is the home for everyone. We will be meeting all speaking languages amongst African people throughout the nine provinces because the IFP is the alternate choice in the prevailing circumstances in South Africa. Mr. Shabisa, thank you very much for your time.